One of the greatest challenges Christian face in their spiritual journey is how to actually live out the spirit-empowered life of impact that God has called them to. We invite you to ministry training starting September 14th. You will learn the biblical and practical ways to be a disciple for Christ. You will become empowered to hear from God, to heal the sick, and defeat the darkness through this 14-week interactive study where you learn the tools needed to truly become a disciple for Jesus. Space is limited, so join us this September for ministry training. For questions, reach out to Pastor Jillian, and to register, go to wellhousechurch.churchcenter.com. Com. We are excited to announce that there is another membership class headed your way. Membership is a great way to stay connected, to learn more about our family, and to learn about opportunities that we have here at Wellhouse. To register, follow the link on the slide or use our Church Center app. You can ask any additional questions at info at westsidesisters.org. Good morning. How are you guys doing? Hey, there's a lot going on right now in, in the world, but there's, there's going to be a lot going on in this church here coming up with falls going to begin to start. And so discipleship tracks are going to start. And I would say get signed up, get ready as we dive in deep to the word. And that's where I'd like to start this morning. In Nehemiah in chapter eight, it says this, Nehemiah said, go and enjoy choice, choice food and sweet drink and send to those who have nothing prepared. Listen to what it says. This day is sacred to our Lord. Do not grieve, for the joy of the Lord is our strength. And it goes on a little bit later. It says, blessed be your glorious name. Will you guys stand with me? And may it be exalted above all blessings and praise. You alone are the Lord. You made the heavens, even the highest heavens, and, 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 and all the, the starry hosts, the earth and all that is in it the sea, and all that is in them. You give them everything, and you multiply the heavens, worship you. Will you worship the Lord with us this morning, recognizing who we're worshiping? We're worshiping the God of heaven and earth, amen? We're worshiping, we're worshiping one that sits above all others. Let's worship him this morning. Will you join me? Split the sea so I could walk right through it. My fears were drowned in perfect love. You rescued me.
this morning that our identity is found in you. And that there's a security that comes from knowing who we belong to. That we've taken on your name.
Your ways are high. 
this morning I just feel like there is just this this place of rest that the Lord is wanting to bring us to. And sometimes in worship, it's like we just get in this rush to get through the songs. And we can really easily just go through the motions. But when we do that, sometimes I think we miss the way the Lord wants to minister to us. And we miss that opportunity to hear his voice. And I know sometimes it's really hard for us to quiet our hearts and to quiet our minds. But man, I feel like right now, more than ever, we need to hear his voice. We need to quiet out the noise. We need to silence it. And we need to be still before him because we need his word. We need his voice to be louder than anything else. And so it may even feel a little uncomfortable for some of you and that's okay. <laughs> it's good for us to be stretched. But I just want us to wait for just a minute I just feel like the Lord wants to speak this morning. Maybe there's some things that you need to lay down before him this morning, some burdens you've been carrying. Maybe you need to come with confession before him this morning. Maybe you're bearing the weight of your sin. There's forgiveness for you this morning. If you will come to him.
or to the right, to not run for things that don't satisfy, but we seek your face. We seek your face, Jesus.
how good you are. No matter if we're standing on the mountaintop this morning or we're in the darkest place we've ever been, God, you're a God that loves us no matter where we're at. And you're good, God. There's none like you. God, your word does not return void to us. Your promises are true. You're new every morning. And God, there's something special about times where we could just sit in your presence and worship you. And we could make you who you're supposed to be in our lives. That's the, the one over us, the number one in our life. We ask, Lord Jesus, that during the times that we spend in the next few moments, that you would speak directly to our hearts. That God, you would use this moment to change our existence, to transform us into a more likeness of you. God, I pray that you would bring those things to mind that we need to dispel in our lives, that we need to cast aside, and that, God, you would get our eyes fixed on you, the author, the finisher of our faith, for we're rooted and established in you. You've called us your children. And you're our Abba Father. We love you dearly, Lord. We ask that you would be with us the rest of this service and throughout the day, that you would remind us that we are on a great commission to spread the hope of Jesus Christ to a hopeless world. In the name of Jesus, we all said amen. Hey, you can be seated. Hey, I just wanna draw your attention to this card. I know it's blank. And I even know it says West Side Sisters on here. Uh, we're trying to use these up and we're using a creative way to do that. If you get a, a word from the Lord, we'd just like you to write it down. They're in the back there. And I'll be setting up for you. You can bring it to me anytime during the service. Also, if you have a testimony of God's done something amazing in your life, either yesterday or three weeks from yesterday or seven years ago, and you want to testify to the goodness of God, would you write it down on one of these cards? You can slip it in the boxes in the back, and we will pull that out this week, and we'll, and we'll talk about it. If you have a prayer request also, I don't know if you guys know, but our staff likes to pray. Big surprise. But if you, uh, if you have a prayer request, please write them down, slip them in the box, and, and we will uh, pray for you this week. Lastly, uh, we're just gonna get ready to give our tithes and offerings. So if you're ready for that, that's awesome. You can fill it out. Um, there's a bunch of ways behind me that you can give. Um, if you have that today, you can put it in the boxes in the back. There'll be guys in the bucket. There'll be guys with buckets, not in the bucket. There'll be guys with buckets in the back. As well as outside, there should be someone standing there with a bucket as well. Hey, um, let me pray for that. And then I wanna introduce this young lady to, to you. God, thank you for uh, the way you give to us without reserve. God, you don't hold back. You give everything. And so, God, I pray that we would have a spirit of generosity back to you, but more so to your kingdom. For, God, we've been called to do one thing on planet Earth, and that's to build your kingdom. And, God, we're called as a church to be a resource church. So we're asking you, God, would you dump out resources to us that we could expand your kingdom on planet Earth one person at a time. We love you, and it's in Jesus' name we pray, amen. Hey, let me introduce this young lady to you. Um, she is my wife. Her name's Lois. We call her around here the first lady. No, we don't really. Uh, I, but she's got a word this morning, and I don't know how much of a privilege that is, but 
But uh, this is the first time I've ever heard my wife preach. That's the first time anybody has. Yeah. She just said that's the first time anyone's ever heard her preach. <laughs> uh, Lois is an amazing woman of God. She loves God deep in her core. She is the nicest person I've ever met. That's not a lie. And I'll tell you what, there's something special about Lois. There's this innocent purity to her, like a child with her father. And as she speaks, I want you to uh, begin to understand who she is through her words. But more so, I want you to hear this story because I think this story, if you'll let it soak into you, no matter where you're at in life, you're gonna get something great out of it. She's my, she's my wife. I've been with her for 30 years. One, two years, something like that. We've been married 30 years. And she's my best friend. And she's also my pastor at times and my counselor. So uh, would you guys re- re- just stretch your hands this way if I pray over my wife. Lord Jesus, thank you that you gave her this word. God, that you gave her this word for this time in this place. And I ask, Lord Jesus, that our hearts would be tender and open. That we would hear your, your voice through these words. And it would transform who we are, that we would begin to understand who we are in you. And God, you would pour out your spirit in this place. And you would make uh, fire starters in this auditorium that would go to the world and spread the gospel, the Holy Spirit, God-centered gospel to this world. Thank you, God, for who you are. Thank you for my wife. I pray that you'd be with her and your spirit would be upon her. In Jesus' name, amen. Can you welcome Lois? thinking the exact same thing. First, the global pandemic, then the national coin shortage, and now the pastor's wife is preaching. Well, welcome to the roller coaster known as 2020. You're just on the next part. Uh, My two hopes for today, uh, number one, is that this is the fun part of the roller coaster ride, not the part where you want to close your eyes and scream. Really hoping for that. Also hoping that none of us, including myself, throw up. That would seem to be such... Such a win, which for me and roller coasters, um, the odds aren't great on that. But um, you guys with me on that? You with me on that endeavor? All right, I'm going to open us up in prayer. Heavenly Father, we thank you for this day and this time. I thank you for these people and this church at Wellhouse Church. I ask that your truth would penetrate deep into our hearts. And if there's any untruth or lies that have landed there, that that truth of yours would root them out. We thank you for your goodness and your faithfulness. There is truly none like you. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Well, we're several weeks into the This Is Us series where we are looking into the mosaic that's made of us, recognizing that we all have different stories and different backgrounds, and that makes this church at Wellhouse Church. So we are the bride of Christ. Are you guys ready for some good news? All right, me too. Let's, um, let's go to the Word of God. We're going to be in Ephesians chapter 1, verses 3 through 8. Most of the scripture I'll be reading today will be out of the New Living Translation, so if you have a Bible app, you may want to switch it to that translation. All praise to God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us with every spiritual blessing in the heavenly realms. Because we are united with Christ, even before he made the world, God loved us and chose us in Christ to be holy and without fault in his eyes. God decided in advance to adopt us into his own family by bringing us to himself through Jesus Christ. This is what he wanted to do, and it gave him great pleasure. So we praise God for the glorious grace he has poured out on us who belong to his dear son. He is so rich in kindness and grace that he purchased our freedom with the blood of his son and forgave our sins. He has showered his kindness on us along with all wisdom and understanding. Now, if I go back in my origin as far as I can to what makes me me is that 72 hours on planet Earth, I was adopted. Ivan and Marjorie had tried for years to have a baby, and they'd had multiple miscarriages. And for me, they would prayed and wished and hoped. Um, And then I was theirs, and they were mine, and we were a family. Now, growing up in that family, I always felt loved and valued and wanted. I don't think I ever remember feeling unwanted or even abandoned, although technically I could think that there's probably two people at least that I was not a part of their original plans. Um, There's this amazing thing I learned, and that is this, that um, seven days from conception, it's seven days before our latest and greatest science technology knows that there is a pregnancy. 
And so I have thought about that seven days and what is happening in that seven days. And this is my theory. I think Psalm 139 is happening. And um, if you need to hear how God feels about you and how God sees you, just read Psalm 139 about 100 times and let it soak in. But Psalm 139 says things like this. You knit me together in my mother's womb. I am fearfully and wonderfully made. I know that full well. That's what's happening. So knitting, if you're not aware, I'm sure most of you are because you're smart people, you take a really long piece of yarn and some knitting needles, and over time and with design and pattern, something functional and beautiful with a purpose is created. And so that is the exact same idea that God is doing, is he is knitting us together. He just The brand of uh, yarn he uses is just called DNA, and that's how he makes us. <laughs> Um, I'm going to deviate from my story a little bit, and this, what I'm about to say, I think there's a lot of people that need to hear, because maybe some untruth has been spoken over you, and uh, we're just going to clear that up right now. So for some people, it may have been said of you at some point in your life, maybe in your childhood, that you were a surprise, or an accident, or a mistake, and um, that is not God's view on any of us. Uh, he's, first of all, he's the creator of heaven and earth. He knows beginning from end. He is the beginning and the end. And so there are no surprises or accidents or mistakes um, from God's perspective. It would be like if, um, let's say, a botanist was in the Amazon jungle and they found this new species of plant, which they do on a fairly regular basis, which is amazing since, you know, they've been discovering things for so long. And God were to say, oh, I didn't know that was there. What a great surprise. I had no idea. How did you guys find that? That's so cool. Or if a marine biologist was exploring the depths of the ocean, which they do on a regular basis, and they find a new form of marine life, and God were to say, oh, yeah, that one was sort of an accident. I had you know, hit it down pretty low, thinking you guys might not find it. It turned out kind of weird. It glows. It's got those teeth. Sorry. I really hope. Or... Um, if, I mean, it's, it's like crazy, isn't it? Or if um, another scientist were to build a bigger telescope so we could see farther into the universe, which they do on a regular basis, and discover a new galaxy, which they do on a regular basis, and God were to say, ooh, yeah, also hoping you weren't going to find that one. That was actually a mistake. I don't know what happened there. Sort of got out of control. I'm, I'm actually hoping that this doesn't cause any of us some trouble. I mean, the whole idea... The whole idea that God has surprises, accidents, or mistakes is completely preposterous. Um, if we say that he is who he says he is, if we say he's the creator of heaven and earth, all of our lives have a purpose and have value, and there is no surprise, accident, or mistake. And so um, there may be some who are listening today who can remember that moment in your life when someone spoke that to you. You might remember where you were and who said it and even the tone in which it was said. And so we, do, I just, this morning, I just feel like it's really important that we just get that out of, of, of what's inside of us. So we're just going to take a moment and pray. And if that's you, just ask the Lord to come into that. Dear Heavenly Father, we know that you are not surprised by anything. You don't have accidents or make mistakes. And so God, for any words that were spoken by someone that, sh that should have loved us really well, that maybe was coming from a place of hurt in their own life that said careless, hurtful words, God. We ask that you come into that moment and that you heal that wound and that you um, put salve on that, your spiritual salve that just is an ointment to, to cover that and you heal it, God. We know that is not truth and it's not from you because you're the creator of all of us and you have good plans for all of us. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. So in my immediate and my extended family, never did I think I was an outsider or that I didn't belong. Uh, and mostly I attribute that to my parents telling me really early and really often that I was chosen by God to be their daughter and they were chosen to be my parents. Now, more recently, I've been reflecting on my name. I'm named after two of my aunts. My Aunt Lois, who's my mother's sister, and my Aunt Darlene, who's sis who is her sister-in-law. And that was a really common practice in my family. It always has been to name your children after, um, after other family members. It's actually kind of, kind of weird. My, my, my husband thinks it's kind of weird. But in my family, it was not weird. Um, it was actually a point of honor and endearment. It would be like saying, I see these characteristics that you have. I see these qualities in your life. I want my child to have those same things, so I'm going to name them after you. Now, more recently, as I've been reflecting on my name, um, oh, sorry, made a mistake, skipping on, next paragraph. 
Um, I, knew, I knew I'd do that. <laughs> but I'm not getting paid, so it's all right. <laughs> um, <laughs> um, when I, was probably, when I was probably 10 years old, my mom told me that she almost named me Molly Marie. Now, I was pretty disappointed when she told me that because I actually really liked that name better than Lois Darlene. Uh, I just thought it fit me better. I thought that, I, and here's why. Because Lois is a really old lady's name. I'm about to prove my point. Now, I did like that my name was in the Bible. In my little kid Bible, I had my name circled. You can find it in Timothy. And here's what I want you to wrap your head around. Who is Lois in the Bible? It's Timothy's grandmother. So even, right? Right? Even in Bible times, Bible times, it was an old lady's name. All right? And then I did some research, and in, when did it reach its height of popularity in the United States? Um, well, that would have been 93 years ago it reached its height of popularity. Yep. Did it make the top three? Nope. Top 10? Nope. It came in at number 17. It was a real... Real great name that year, 1927 uh, was the year for that. And so here's what I've concluded. In my parents naming me after family members, this is what I think they were doing. I think they were making an overt effort to firmly establish me in a family that was not mine by biology, but by God's design. There would be no question of whose family I belonged to, no question for me or my grandparents or my aunts and uncles or my cousins or anybody that knew my family because they know whose name I have and whose family I belong to. I have the full benefits of being in that family. Church, we have the full benefits of being the children of God. The Bible says we are adopted sons and daughters and we are co-heirs with Christ. In case anyone is wondering who's included in God's family, I've got more good news. Probably the most quoted verse of the Bible is John 3.16, and that says, For God so loved the, wor the world that whoever believes in... For God so loved the world... Almost blew that. <laughs> almost blew it. For God so loved the world that he sent his one and only son that whoever believes in him would not perish but have everlasting life. So who does God include? The world. Pretty, pretty inclusive. And who can be a child of God? Whoever believes, also very inclusive. And then in Galatians chapter 3, verses 26 through 29, for you are all children of God through faith in Christ Jesus, and all have been united with Christ in baptism, have put on Christ, like putting on new clothes. There's no longer Jew or Gentile, slave or free, male or female, for you are all one in Christ Jesus. And now that you belong to Christ, you are true children of Abraham. You are his heirs, and God's promise to Abraham belongs to you. And if you want to read about that promise to Abraham, it's in Genesis 12, 3. Now, because Jesus came and fulfilled the law, we are co-heirs with Christ. Uh, Paul is the author of both of those two passages that I've read this morning. And Paul had the unique perspective of being both Jewish and Roman. Now, in the Jewish world, adoption was not very common practice. But in the Roman world, it was both common and significant. So in a Roman adoption, the new adopted son lost all his rights and privileges from his previous family, but he gained all the rights as a legitimate son of his new family. He got a new father, and he became heir to his new father's estate, and he became co-heir with any other sons that the father had. And in the eyes of the law, the old life was completely wiped out. All the debts were canceled. And uh, he was absolutely the son of this new father. And this uh, adoption act in Roman culture was carried out in the presence of seven witnesses. That's more than it takes to uh, witness a marriage. And I think that's seven people that could testify. I know whose son this is. I know who, who his father is. I know what he is heir to. Church, we have the full benefits of being the children of God. Benefits of forgiven sin. Freedom for the sake of freedom, abundant life, eternal life. Now, some of these benefits we get while we're on planet Earth in our lifetime, and some of these benefits we'll experience for all eternity. Um, but to be heirs to these benefits, we have to become children of God. In Galatians chapter 4, verses 5, 5 through 7, it says, God sent him to buy freedom for us who were slaves to the law so that he could adopt us as his very own children. And because we are his children, God sent the spirit of his son into our hearts, prompting us to call out, Abba, Father. Now you are no longer a slave, but God's own child. And since you are his child, God has made you his heir. And then in Romans chapter 8, verses 13 through 17, and this one I chose the ESV translation. For if you live according to the flesh, you will die. But if you live by the spirit, you put to death the deeds of the body, you will live. 
For all who are led by the Spirit of God are sons of God. For you did not receive the spirit of slavery to fall back into fear, but you have received the spirit of adoption as sons by whom we cry, Abba, Father. The Spirit himself bears witness with our spirit that we are children of God, and if children, then heirs, heirs of God and fellow heirs with Christ, provided we suffer with him in order that we also may be glorified with him. A couple of things to point out in those last passages is uh, they both refer to God as Abba, Father. And as you probably know, that's a term of personal intimacy, like saying my dad or daddy. And um, when we're talking about our Abba Father, we're not talking about some distant patriarch who's looking like to squish his thumb down on us. We're talking about the kind of dad who says, you can do it, and I'm so proud of you, and I believe in you. That's the kind of dad we have. Now, when, um, when we're talking about fathers and dads, it's pretty natural to think of our earthly fathers and dads. And if we had a kind and loving father here on earth, that that's who our father is, then that's a good thing. But that may not be everybody's experience. And so I was thinking about my earthly fathers, and I technically have had three. So I have my biological father, my adoptive dad, and then later in life, my stepdad. Now, my biological father, I've never met, and maybe that's a good thing. He, he might not even know I exist. That's a real possibility. And then my adoptive dad was a great dad. He was the kind of dad who makes blanket forts with you in the living room on Saturday morning or takes you to the park to play or when you're six, he buys you a calculator. And if you're, I know, you're thinking it's a bad gift, but if you're a little girl who likes numbers and math, it's a pretty cool gift. Um, unfortunately, that same dad, um, because of hurts probably that had happened in his life uh, as a child and growing up, he had a really um, bad addiction to alcohol and gambling. And so those addictions ended up robbing everything of his life, up to and including his life. And so that was my adoptive dad. And then my stepdad, he came into my life after I was already an adult and I was already married. So we never really had that father-daughter relationship. I just want to say this morning that if any of us have had dads that were absent or hurtful or even worse, I just want to make it clear that's not our Abba Father. He's always a wonderful father who loves us so dearly, and his heart is always for us, and nothing is more important to him than his relationship with his kids, which is why he sent Jesus. And secondly, that passage in Romans refers to the Holy Spirit, which I love. That's why I chose the ESV. He calls the Holy Spirit the spirit of adoption. Um, I know a, a physical adoption is a beautiful thing, and there are millions of families who know that as well. But a spiritual adoption is even more wonderful because it establishes for all eternity whose kids we are and where our identity is. Church, we have the full benefits of being the children of God. Our identity, our identity is that we are the sons and daughters of the creator of heaven and earth because of the work that his son Jesus did on the cross and his resurrection. When we ask Christ to be our Lord and receive him and the Holy Spirit that he promised, Something changes. God sees us as co-heirs with Christ, and we're no longer slaves. Listen to what we're no longer slaves to. We're no longer slaves to sin or fear or the Old Testament law that we used to be under. Because Jesus either conquered those or he fulfilled them. He just took care of it all. Now, if we compare our spiritual adoption to a Roman adoption, we can know that the old life is removed, and it's no more. And we become children of God to share with Christ as his heirs. And here's the kind of children are. We are free children. We are free to receive and give forgiveness, free to receive and give love, free from fear, free from shame, free to have peace and hope when the whole world is headed south in a handbasket because we know whose we are and what that means. Um, this morning, there's some, uh, some options for you to think about what point in the journey with God you're on. Maybe there are some people who are hearing this and you're saying, I have never made that decision to become a child of God, but that's something I want to do. I want a new identity. I want a new dad. Um, today's a great day to be your adoption day. So if you are listening on the radio or you're listening online or you're outside in the lawn at Wellhouse Church or you're in the building, um, if you would like to do that, if you've never asked Jesus to be your Lord and Savior and you'd like to do that, I'm not going to do anything to embarrass you. I'm going to pray a prayer out loud and you can just quietly repeat it in your heart. But if you want to do that, I would ask that you just slip your hand up anywhere that you're at. Let's pray. Abba, Father, 
We thank you that you sent your son Jesus to live a perfect and sinless life. We ask that you forgive us of our sins that we've committed against you, and we ask that you become our Lord and Savior. From this day forward, we declare that you're our dad and we're your kids. In Jesus' name, amen. Now, maybe there's some of us who would say we know who our dad is, but we've been away for a while. And that reminds me of probably my favorite story in the Bible, and it's the story of the prodigal son. It's found in Luke chapter 15. I'm not going to read it from the Bible. I'm going to try and save time and shorten it down. And here's how it goes. It's a good story. A father had two sons, and the youngest son came to his father, and he said, I don't want to wait till you die. I want my inheritance now. And so the father gave him his inheritance as he asked. And then a few days later, the son left. And he headed, um, he headed for a distant land. And when he got to that distant land, he squandered everything his generous father had given him on some wild living. And unfortunately for that youngest son, he ended up squandering everything he had. About the same time, a great famine came to the land that he, was, he found himself in. So he ended up um, feeding pigs. That was, that was kind of how he was surviving. And he reached his really low point, and this is pretty low, um, when the food he was feeding the pigs looked good. Fortunately for him, he came to his senses, and he remembered that his father was, uh, was a good man, and that the hired servants that worked for his father were doing much better than he was. So he purposed in his heart that we, he would head home, and he would ask his father if he could become one of the hired servants and not expecting to be a son at all. And so he made his way back. And this is where the story, it gets really good. Um, It says, while he was a long way off, the father saw the son, which of course implies that the father was looking for the son. That's the kind of dad we have. He's looking for us to head home. So while he was a long way off, the father saw the son. And did the father make him do the walk of shame up the long driveway? No, he did not. The father broke all cultural norms. He threw relational boundaries out the window. He chucked tough tough love. That's that's gone too. And he ran. He ran to the son. This is the kind of dad we have. He runs to the son, and he hugs him, and he kisses him. And the son tries to say, I'm not worthy to be your son. I just want to work for you. I'm so sorry. I've sinned against you. And the father says, nonsense. I thought you were dead, and now you're alive. We're having a party. So he tells everybody slaughtered the fattened calf, we're having a big party. That's, that's where I'll leave the story. I'll get to the older son, um, and if you're firstborn, you should be worried like I am, because it, <laughs> it doesn't reflect well on us who have been staying and working. Um, so anyway, if that's a, a point where you're at, um, just know that God is looking, and he doesn't make us do the walk of shame. He is actually running to us. All we have to do is head towards home. So maybe today, You've been away for a while, and maybe you've even squandered um, what God's given you. He says, just come back home. I'm running towards you. Uh, Now, there could be another option. Um, Maybe some of us just need a reminder of how God sees us. Like, we we know we're God's kids, and we haven't haven't wandered away, but we just forget that he sees us as co-heirs with Christ and what that really means. Um, I have two points to illustrate that. The first is I'll wrap up that story with the the prodigal son. So the older son, um, and it's going to show the father's heart is so good for the older son too. The older son, here's the party going on. So he asks one of the other hired servants, what's going on? And they say, oh, your brother that took off, he came back, your dad's throwing a big party, we slaughtered the fattened calf. And the older son is so enraged because as us firstborns do, He's been at home working hard um, with a good attitude, I might say. (laughs) Um, (laughs) um, And so he is so angry that he won't even go into the party. Um, And so the father, here's the father's heart again. The father comes out to him, and this is what he says to that oldest son. Well, the oldest son first goes off, and he says, you wouldn't even give me a goat to have a party with my friends and celebrate. And this is what the father says. And we need to hear this if we think we're somehow not getting the father's attention or his love. This is what he says. You have always been with me. Everything I have is yours. So some of us may need to hear everything God has belongs to us. And then my second slightly more personal way to illustrate that is you guys are going to like this. 
Last month, I went to the dermatologist. I know, everybody's starting to get a little squirm, like, ugh, she's going to do a doctor appointment. Yep, I'm going to go there. So, um, went... I wasn't excited about going to the dermatologist. I'd actually put it off as long as possible because that's always a really wise thing to do, um, to put things off like that. I, but I had this weird spot on my leg, kind of on my calf, and it wasn't looking any less weird over time. In fact, it was looking so weird that my husband and one of my sons said, you've got a weird spot on your leg. You should go get that looked at. So I was responsible, and I went, and I called and made an appointment, and the gal said, would you like an early appointment or late? And I said, well, early, and she said, 6.45. I'm like, that is, in fact, early. <laughs> um, yes, but I'll take it because, you know, it'll be the first appointment of the day. I won't get backed up behind anybody. Get in, get out. So took that appointment. I show up, and there I am sitting on the end of the table waiting for the doctor to come in in the gown of humility, like it is the 21st century. Can we not have better designed hospital gowns? So horrible. They know they can tell you anything because you can't defend yourself or even run away because you're wearing that gown. I mean, they can just do, they totally have you and they know it and they can charge you whatever they want. So I'm sitting there and um, I'm sad to say that I did not take every thought captive and I started to let my mind wander a little bit. And I started to think, you know that spot on my leg, that weird spot, it looks pretty bad. I probably should have come in sooner. And I started to go down a, a trail that got dark quick, and I just had about written my own eulogy. I, mean, I was just about had it written up. Like, well, all the bills are on auto pay, and we've got direct deposit. Jerry's going to be fine for a while. It'll just all keep going. <laughs> So I started to get a little emotional, I'm sad to say, and so I had to rein it in and pull myself together and start taking those thought captives. So I did that, and a few minutes later, the doctor came in, and how the table was positioned was the end of the table where I was sitting was directly across from the door. So as soon as she opened that door, we are face to face, and here's what she says to me. Today is going to be a great day. You have wonderful skin. Now, okay, let's just pause on that for a moment, okay? Yeah, ladies, wouldn't it be so awesome, si this side story, if every morning when we walked into our bathroom, our mirror <laughs> like, said that, to today is going to be a great day. You have wonderful skin. Uh, just, I just think that would be so great. My, there is talking happening in my bathroom, but it's me talking to the mirror going, well, that... That's not accurate. Is that accurate? <laughs> so anyway, that's what she says. So immediately I'm relieved, but I think something in my face gave away the fact that I, that weird spot on my leg, because followed by that lovely comment that she made, she said, don't worry, I'll look you over from head to toe, but you're fine. So she then did proceed to look me over from head to toe, and she got to that weird spot on my leg, and here's what she said. Oh, that's a blah, blah, blah. And she said the medical terminology for it, and it did sound quite deadly. I mean, it really <laughs> sounded bad. Um, I knew it wasn't because of her tone of voice. And then what, here's what she said after that. That's just because you've been around for 50 years. You're going to get more of those. I, I know, I know. Um, <laughs> then she said, you've got three on your back. I'm like, on my back? I didn't even know they were there because they're on my back. I can't see them. She said, I can take care of that. So all that to say, long story to say, when God looks at us, he says, today's going to be the, a great day. You have the face of my son. You have my Holy Spirit residing in you. And when we pause, when we're like, oh, that feels so nice, God, thank you. When we pause and we're like, yeah, but there's that thing in my life, God, that I think um, might disqualify me from serving you or from being qualified or from doing whatever you've asked. And here's what God says about that. He says, yeah, I know about it. It's just a blah, blah, blah. It's just because you've been on the planet for a while, right? Um, you're going to get more of those. Um, and then he says, I can take care of that if you let me. And then he says, and if you sit still long enough, I'll take care of the things you don't even know about. So that might be some of us. And then, um, now aren't you glad, that, guys, I went to the dermatologist? Yeah. <laughs> I get to go back on Tuesday and get that weird spot removed. Um, then finally, once we are reconciled to our Abba Father, some of us might, hopefully all of us get, are in this point where once we are reconciled to our Abba Father, we have the best job. And it doesn't matter what our age or stage, what our, what our economics are, what the color of our skin, what our gender is, whether we're in vocational ministry or we're 
in any other kind of workforce at all. We get to be reconcilers of others to our Abba Father. We get to introduce them to our dad. So whatever each of our stories is, whatever our journeys has been, there's somebody, somebody that in our immediate um, field of vision that needs to hear that because they need to know that God saw us and he saved us and that has made all the difference, all right? So um, I'm going to ask that if any of those four things um, touched your heart, whether it was to become a child of God, to um, come back to God, to see yourself as God sees you, or to be an ambassador and a reconciler, if you would stand with me, we're just going to pray right now as we head out. Abba, Father, we just thank you that you are such a good dad, and we thank you that you love your children so much. God, we pray this morning that whether we are listening on the radio or on watching online or we're in the building or outside the building, God, that you um, would plant the truth of your word in our hearts deep and whatever was spoken today that was true would stay and whatever was not of you would, would just um, slip away. God, we just want to commit that we are your children. We love you dearly. Help us to see ourselves as you see us, as dearly loved and help us to walk out the great commission that you've given us to be ambassadors of your love. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Hey, can we give her a hand? Well, I'm super proud of her. Not only is she way funnier than I am, she's way quicker than I am too. So uh, you guys should have enjoyed church this morning. Right? Uh, I'm, I'm super proud of Lois. Uh, that, that took a lot for her. You don't know. Uh, she's not normally the one who wants to stand on the stage. So thank you for the word. It was, it was not only um, awesome that you did it, but the word we needed to hear. We're identified with Christ, and we are his children. Hey, I want you to do three things as you go. You know what they are. His presence, his people, his kingdom. Amen? Let me pray over us as we go today. And, and uh, if you're joining us uh, outside venue, online, or uh, on New Life Radio, if you have received Christ today, we want to know about that. Would you please send us an email? Let us know that you received Christ today. Thank you, God, for who you are. Thank you, God, that you're the God who always runs after us, that you're a pursuant God, that you never stop running towards us. We ask, Lord God, that we take the moment to stop and turn around and come back to you if we're away. We thank you, God, that you have called us your sons and daughters and that we're co-heirs with Christ. That means we have full rights as the children of God. So I ask the Lord that we would walk with those full rights as ambassadors and reconcilers to who you are. In Jesus' name, we all said amen. Have a great day. <laughs>